Hello friends, welcome to the Hearts of Iron Complete tutorial for the year 2024 where we're going on a walkthrough. We're amazingly up to part 16 already in this series and today's the day, or at least today's the episode, where we finally kick things off with Holland. Those of you that have been following along, you may recall we've just got a few more touches to put into place so that's going to form the initial parts of this episode. Don't forget, if you are new here to follow along, you'll need to watch the whole series. So make sure you take a look at the playlist. It's in the description if you're interested. Okay. Let's come back to the game. And we will zoom in over the German area, continuing where we left off previously. We'll slow time down as we always do when we load up. Let's come over to the F2 menu, Navy, see where everything stands there. Surface flotilla, I'm happy with that. Come over to our U-boat guy. He's got all 10 U-boats now in his latest flotilla. You see, we've not yet got any ships over and above that, but that's fine. Uh, air menu, let's see what's happening there. Oh yes, we recruited a bunch of aircraft that weren't quite yet enough to fulfill the air wings. There is very little point in training an air wing that is not yet full, unless it's so close to being full and you've got a high rate of production. So you can see a lot of these are sort of half full or thereabouts or less, with the exception of the bomber, tactical bomber wing. So I don't think there's much there to be gained. Okay, that done, let's come back to the default view. Take a look at political power. We've got over 200, so we're going to be able to make a nice decision here. So first off, coming over here, we've got our free trade agreement. Remember this, aside from being able, or rather aside from giving us a bunch of bonuses here, meant we actually gave a lot of resources away, but we also gave a bunch of intelligence away. So let's now think of changing this. Now we may wish, oh well, if we go from 80% to 50% stuff being given away, that's obviously a big increase. It also reduces some of our bonuses as opposed to giving only 25% away for a massive reduction in bonuses. Closed economy, we can't yet go, but I wouldn't pick it even if we could. It's basically a toss up between these two. The only thing that puts me off going for an export focus is I would then have to spend another 150 to go over to the limited exports. So I think what I'm going to do is just drop straight down from free trade to limited in one go, get it over and done with. And because of that, we're going to be able to hang on to a huge amount of resources that we're currently giving away. So let's do that. OK, because we've now made this yeah, just check that I've actually re pressed record. Believe you me, <laughs> not in this series, thankfully, but I've done that before. Recorded a tutorial, gotten to the end only to realize I never pressed record. Usually happens when you screw the intro and you do it a second time and a third time. And at some point you forget to hit record. But in any case, my problem, not yours, thankfully. OK, now with that decision made, let's take a look at our shortage of resources. So in this case, steel, well, you may say, well, why? steel should sort itself out. Yes, it should as soon as we hit unpause. So let's unpause space bar. And look at that. We go from being 15 short to suddenly having 260 pieces of steel in excess. Why? Again, because we're not giving three quarters of it or more away, 80%. So the first thing we want to stop is any trade to say Italy because currently we're giving them a factory to give us steel and all of that steel is going to waste so let's cancel that okay and same sort of issue over here for rubber now okay in the very because trade is very instant you can start trade and stop trade literally from one day to the next there is actually little reason to say oh well i'll tell you what as soon as we get the next military factories we'll produce more aircraft so we will eventually make use of these nine pieces of rubber okay if that's the case start trade up at that time save yourself a few days worth of use with your own factory in other words Let's come over to the Dutch East Indies and let's cancel that trade. And again, this will give you the exact amount you need, which in this case, because we've got too much, we need less. So let's click send. 
and on pause and there we go everything there's in the green now which is good we're not wasting anything through trade through trade in any case all right let's pick up the pace full speed and we'll go through to middle of august boom there we go okay so what i wanted to do was ensure that my divisions are pretty much up to scratch because we're going to start soon uh, we've got Bok up here on Northern Poland. Now, one of the things that I've not really made use of yet in my infantry is uh, scouts. Um, our scouts or our scouting abilities are actually tied up with our motorized trucks. So infantry itself is basically relying on these motorized trucks, which is okay. Bok actually has one um, cavalry division. Now this, if you recall, if we come over to our recruit uh, menu, is this one here, the cavalry brigade, which differs somewhat to our home guards. If we take a look, here's how. They actually come with some scouts as well as artillery. Now this isn't a bad division per se. I just wish it had a few more... Uh, battalions of cavalry now we could add them but of course that's going to cost us uh, experience points we only have 36 every time you add another battalion it's going to cost you five points uh, to do just that so let's leave it for now i'm in two minds as to whether to uh, swap that cavalry over to a standard infantry division but let's just leave it for now what i do want to do though is continue upgrading some of these older divisions so let's just i don't know let's come over here to bok let's just select six of them we'll switch them over to the newer kinds and i'm not going to here's why look at that we're short now on anti -air. so i'll tell you what we're just going to leave that scratch that so this is now the perfect time to stop upgrading infantry what we now need to do if anything is either to wait more time or ideally ramp up our anti-air production so let's hit cancel cancel and we'll leave it there take a look at our guy who's training these we've got a few divisions here that are ready to go so i'll tell you what let's do it this way let's give four of these divisions over to bok okay We've got this older guy here, so coming over to our guys who have been training, let's give him two divisions. Um, motorized. I'll tell you what, he can have one motorized division. So let's give him one regular, one motorized. That's going to put him up to six divisions. Okay. Um, escape. Let's have a look at Eins Guderian. He's got one Panzer Division and one truck. I'll tell you who doesn't have a motorized division yet. Rommel. He's only got three Panzers. So with Rommel destined for a motorized division, let's select the one. Right click onto Rommel. And again, the generals will move them all as required. And at least for my game, that leaves just two divisions left. And again, exactly where yours is. Again, it's only going to be a day or two away, hopefully. Select the remaining two and just give them someone else. And even if you say, oh, well, I've only got one division ready. Okay, if it's like this and it's like 99%, just go for it. Okay, so with these guys, and just to prove it, I'm just going to select these two divisions Let's hand him over to this general here. And if you recall, he is covering the southern half of Germany slash Poland. So right click there. OK. Escape. Things moving mighty fast. Quick check on Navy. OK. OK. Oh, this guy's been training. Well, they're still a little ways off. OK. Let's switch over to the Air Force. Oh, we know what we're doing there. OK. Back to F1. Um, pause. Just waiting for a notification to roll around. Pause. The fourth international. Dum ba dum ba dum. Read if you like. Okay. Um, pause. Pause. Advanced machine tools. Research complete. Okay. So let's go ahead that's this one here so again the efficiency cap is higher which means the research will do uh 
or other factories producing the same stuff eventually now produce more stuff at the end of each week. Take a look at this, because our focus tree with the synthetics has completed, here's our 300% bonus we were talking about. And remember when I said, or oh, remember, and I think it was last episode now, and it was something like 200 now, however many days it was to research this, it's now going to take 91 days. And you may say, well, why don't you research the rubber? The answer is, well, that's only going to take 49 days. So a 300% bonus, which again, is a, it's, it's roughly like 70, 75% free. That's the way I would like to view it. You may as well get the more expensive thing. And as you can see there, the refinery is about twice as expensive as the rubber in terms of days to research. So let's get that one squared away. Okay. Pump pause. Pause. Doctrine available. Navy experience. That's where you want to pause. Select. And remember I was saying I now want to go down the submarine side of things. Let's start going down the sub. We've also got this one here, which is battle cruiser, battleship, and so on. Again, we have so few of those sort of ships. We do have, I believe, two battleships, and we've got, I think, two battle cruisers being produced at this moment in time. So again, this is not worthless, but we're going to get far more because we've got, I don't know, we've got something like 50, 60 U-boats so far ready to go. So having a little bit of bonus across 50 or 60 ships is obviously far better than having what may be a bigger bonus, but only over a few ships. Granted, Battleship is going to cause more damage if it's involved than a submarine would. But again, we've got so many more subs, so let's go for it. Okay. Also take a look. We've got three military factories. Remember the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. <laughs> of course. Well, actually, I'm not joking, am I? I'm being deadly serious in that regard. But we've also got three military factories. So what we want to do is assign more to... Or in this case, just the one, 53. We're using 52. So the way I do it is have a little look at logistics. Unless I already know, oh, I'm really short on this and you already know what you want to do. But absent of that, we'll take a look at logistics and see what we're the most short of. Now, tactical bombers would be a nice thing. You can see we're still short on those. Uh, we're short on close air support and naval bombers. Remember, that's because they're all at Berlin waiting to be fulfilled. The only problem is, do we have enough rubber? So let's come over to the trade menu. And as it happens, take a look at this. We've got one piece of rubber spare. So coming over to the free military factories, let's make use of that piece of rubber. And we'll start producing. And again, I'm going to go for the tactical bomber. There are many players that completely avoid using the tactical bombers. Uh, I see why they cost uh, slightly more, but they do have that larger range um, and another useful one is the transport aircraft. But let's focus in uh, getting that second factory there producing tactical bombers. Okay. All right, let's roll around until late September for five. Loads of notifications there. So let's deal with them. Research company. Okay. We've also got some assigned divisions. So again, shift click, select them all. And there's a whole bunch of them. Give them to the guy who's training. There he goes. Speaking of the guy who's training, we've got these two, what we were going to call slightly cheaper or border guards. So let's select just both of those. And if you recall, there was a general just guarding this vague area over here. And I think it was Paulus. So we're going to right with these two guys selected, we're going to right click on top of Paulus. And now selecting this guy, you can see now the existing two divisions together with these two newer ones are going to go over to that area. What I'm going to do is tell him to guard a larger area. So with the area defense, he's currently just guarding this area. I'm going to select here. You can see because he's only assigned to guard naval bases, something we did a few episodes ago. He doesn't need as many divisions as if he had to cover the entire area. We're also going to uh, guard this area of northern Germany as well as this area here. And that should do quite nicely. You can see he thinks he needs three divisions to do that effectively. He's actually got four. All good. Okay, let's escape. 
Next thing, research slot. Make sure we get this one on the go. Things are still ahead of time, but we are definitely catching up. Let's go ahead, go for the... Uh, let's Yeah, let's go for dispersed industry next. And again, all the bonuses there you've seen before from the previous level, level three. Things are starting to stack up quite nicely. Okay, let's unpause. Let's get to the end of September... October, pause. Let's take a little look at everybody who's been training and all of those with the, uh, you know, the silver stars, I like to say. Let's select all of these divisions, however many you've got. And I'm going to give them over to our general there that's, again, covering the southern part of uh, Germany, Poland. There we go. All nice and done. Okay. Uh, Navy-wise, let's check it over here. So, surface flotilla, they've just been sat there now. That's great. Uh, U-boat guy, most of these have got a silver star, so let's cease their training. That's fine. Escape, if we come over here. Three new subs ready. This will probably be the final flotilla that we create for, for now. So, with these guys selected, once again, right-click onto the Admiral. Enable the automatic split off as well as the reinforcements. Come over to the task force comp editor and we'll up this to 10 boats just like before. Okay. And we'll not start their training just yet. We'll just wait for it to fill up just a little bit more. Okay. Let's hit escape. Take a look at the fuel. We absolutely do not want to waste fuel because, of course, we are trading for a lot of that fuel. But this should hopefully coincide quite nicely with the outbreak of war. Uh, last but not least, let's come over to the aircraft menu, F3, and see is there anyone here that are ready to go. This aircraft or fighter has 100, so they can start. We also see the larger bomber here is 95, so very close to 100, so let's go ahead and start their training as well. Okay, let's hit escape, compose, and we'll just go sort of absent of there being a notification. We'll go for two week intervals. So pause. There we go. The Munich conference. So this is to do with our focus tree. OK, historic case for Germany. Take a look at the bonuses there. More war support, more stability. Good, good, good. All good stuff. OK, demand zoot and lands. OK. And so we actually end up now. And I believe it's with this state here. That was previously, uh, let me just put a road network down. This green one here that's a four out of five was previously part of Czechoslovakia. Is now ours, which is a good thing. Okay, let's hit escape. Come back over to national focus. We want to continue down here for the first Vienna Awards so we can have the fate of Czechoslovakia. So let's do that. And as soon as we've done that, then we'll make our way for this one. Okay. Free military factories are available, which may or may not have uh, arisen from the eastern Su Sudetenland, I think they call it. Um, so let's have a look what we can do. We've got two spare pieces of rubber, so we absolutely want to make use of those. And again, we're going to be really short on fight. We're going to be short on all aircraft, but fighter aircraft, obviously, if you lose those, it's over anyway. Uh, so let's up that to eight factories. And with our additional factories that are spare, in my case, I've got an additional two. If you remember, anti-air, we were making good use of that. So let's put a second factory producing those. And as you can see here, um, and I think I, I've not yet touched on this too much, but you can see here, once you've got things in green with the warehouse, that means you've got enough and more than enough. When you see something like this it means you are potentially short and you need them for reinforcement you will also see an icon such as this which is an upgrade icon which means you're not necessarily short on aircraft but we're producing these because there are fighter wings that have the older style aircraft so you'll sort of see these icons interchangeably throughout the whole uh, game so it's obviously really important we don't run out of rifles and it is very easy to do, especially as you start conquering more areas because not only is your army burning through these weapons via attrition, but you've also got these new areas that are now under your control that require the military police and they obviously require weapons. So the more of an area you conquer, the more military police you need and they need weapons. So it's very easy to run out of these. 
Uh, so let's crank up to, let's set 15 factories going for there. We've got a new decision to be made. And you may say, well, hang on a minute. What's happened? Didn't we have somebody over here? I thought you said they were full and they were. We've actually lost our guy that makes it easier and cheaper to build uh, civilian factories. And that's due to one of the dependencies that's, that's required and he's basically gone. So if we come over to political advisor, one of the ones I find real useful now is, where are we? This guy, the Prince of Terror. And the reason is, once we start conquering other countries, which is going to happen very soon, having this guy hired, and again, you can see the bonuses there, but to cut a long story short, when people start rebelling and all the rest of it, having this guy in place, they're basically fearful of him, and oh, he comes after us like, you know, he, if one of us causes one of your guys to die, he's going to come down and kill a hundred of ours. So in other words, we just best not do anything. Having somebody like that in when you are conquering country after country is, is, is a good thing, right? And again, that's reflected by the positive bonuses. So let's go ahead and get him in. And not again that that's an immediate benefit to us because we haven't yet started conquering, but let's get him in place, right? And again, being easy we get more political power than uh, playing on regular. Okay, let's unpause. Munich agreement, peace for now. Pause. Now, my game shows this low supply. Maybe yours will, maybe yours won't. Again, just depends exactly on where divisions are. So let's select it. Now you can see here, okay, great example. Take a look at our division here. In this case, the motorized division under Bock is slightly sh uh, short on supply. And if we take a look, actually down to 48%. This is terrible when you consider the division isn't even doing anything. Once they're starting to fight, that is only going to get worse. Why are they short on supply? Take a look at how all of Bock's stuff is being supplied by horseback. Or motorization level one is another way of looking at this. If you remember, we touched on this in Spain, so the easy way around it, let's select Bok. Let's click once. Instead of horses, there's trucks going to be doing the deliveries now. So let's slow time down. Remember on the F4 view, which we are already are because we clicked on this, automatically takes us to F4 supply view. We can see here, okay, it's okay in most areas, but it's actually red here. In other words, poor supply. Let's unpause. See, now that's gone blue because the trucks, at least on level two, are able to completely supply all areas. You may say, oh, well, there's still a little bit of red over here. Okay, switch it up to level three, the highest level. Unpause. Obviously, that's going to use even more trucks to fulfill those supply requirements. And there we see as we tick over to the next day, the entire area is blue. Now, one thing we've not yet really touched on is, okay, I get it. You said the supply comes from the capital. And as you hover over one of these supply hubs, you can see, yes, indeed, that falls through from the capital. And again, you can hover over any supply hub. And it will show you the direction that supplies take to get to that specific hub. Now, you may say, well, why there's sometimes different colors? And that's just showing you that there's a potential bottleneck in the system. And as you've seen, the different railways, or you may have seen, have different numbers. So if we come over to our railways option, not something I don't think we've looked at yet. You can see here, between Brandenburg and this very next supply hub here is a level 3. That's that number there. But then between that spot and there, over in Hanover, is a level 1, which is the lowest level of railway, absent of there being none whatsoever. And so take a look at the supply capacity on a level 1. 15 amount or, or, or tons of supply, however you want to view it, gets down there. Whereas on a level 3, look at that, it's more like 25 tons of supply. So if we come over here, if there happens to be a shortage, we'll see it here. And it's going to tell us exactly where that bottleneck is. In this case, um, between Königsberg and Allenstein. And again, if you think, oh, well, I don't really know my counties and I certainly don't. Uh, is there a quick way to fix that? Yes, there is. Come over to your F4 menu. Let's just deselect everything. Come over to F4. 
Select, and here you can see it's red. Select the supply hub in question and see we've got this little icon here at the top. It's an up arrow and what looks like a railway junction. Well, that's exactly what it is. It's going to upgrade the railway network, but it's only going to upgrade it at wherever the bottleneck is. So it's, it's not going to do the entire thing from the capital all the way here, just where the problem is. And in this case, I believe it's this red railway line here, this little bit of red railway. So let's go ahead. Let's just do it for argument's sake, just so that we've seen it. We've pressed it once and that's it done. If we come over, press escape, come over to our construction menu and take a look at the bottom of the list. That's what we've just done by uh, upgrading the bottleneck. And you can see there, there are two railway segments that need doing. Why two? Well, because there's one piece of railway uh, between the hub and there and one piece between there and the second hub. So yeah, again, yeah. In other words, there are two states, right? You've got the state here, you've got the state in between, you've got the state here, two states, two segments of railway track. That's it. That's going to be upgraded to a level two once that's complete. And again, more supply will fit through. Makes sense, right? You basically got two railway lines instead of one or however you wish to view that. Okay, let's press escape. Let's carry on. Let's pick up the pace once more. Pause, 1st of November, we've got a bunch of updates there, so we've got a new radar technology, we've also got new divisions, select, let's get all of those under the new army, training, there we go. Anything here? Well, I'll tell you what, this infantry division here, I don't know how I missed him before, but I somehow did, let's change him over to the new stat and take a look at that, we're short on anti-air, we've got no anti-air available. So let's leave it for now, that division. I'll tell you what, let's assign that division to an army somewhere because he's already trained. He's not going to give us any benefits there. Um, let's give him to the uh, older guy there between Germany and Lithuania. So again, with just that infantry, right click. Okay. Research what we got. This is still over a year ahead of time. Industry-wise, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead, go for the uh, improved rubber processing. And again, this comes from our own synthetic refineries. You can see the stat there. For every refinery we have, we're going to get an additional one piece of rubber once we've researched this. And don't forget, we've built a bunch of refineries by now. So let's get that on the boil. Okay, escape, unpause. We've also got a new doctrine available. And you can tell usually, oh, well, air is over 100 so that's where it's going to be and again this is coming from we've got a chief of the air force and a little bit of training going on the two together is what's generating this trickle of points so let's come over here direct ground support this is a good one take a look at that ground support plus 20 so you know when we've got our dive bombers assisting the military this is going to assist by an additional 20 percent all good okay escape on pause Pause. Our new weapons are now unlocked. The MP38. Okay. Now it's time to look at an icon I don't think we've seen before. It's this one here. Uh, it looks like a crate with a... Well, at first I thought it was a cloud, but it's actually a tank with an exclamation mark. But you'll see this icon a lot. And all that it means is, if we click on it, you are still producing your old weapons, but now because we've researched a newer weapon or a newer weapon type, you may wish to stop producing the old weapon and start producing the new weapon. We will lose a little bit of production efficiency because we're no longer building old weapons, but we're building new ones. But we will not lose as much as if we say get the factory that was producing trains to switch over to guns. Because, of course, old guns, new guns, there's going to be some similarities, and that we will keep. Are there ever advantages to keeping the old weapons being built? Absolutely, there there are. And the most obvious one, take a look at this. We're currently producing 167... We're, we're producing 168 rifles a day. Let's just slow time down. Unpause. That's going to uh, tick over. There we go. 168 per day. And again, the reason it suddenly jumped up is because the efficiency is increasing slowly and slowly every day. 
So if I now think, right, well, I want you to start producing the newer equipment, which I do, the MP38. Watch how many weapons are being produced per day. 168. Click. 65. That is a huge drop, right? We're like less than half. And again, take a look at our efficiency cap. Massive drop there. Again, not as big of a drop as had we started building something entirely new from scratch but certainly a drop worth reckoning with. If you're short on infantry equipment at the time, for goodness sake, don't suddenly decide to produce a newer type of equipment. It's just going to exacerbate those shortages, even though it's a better piece of equipment. Take a look down here. As you can see now, we've got this upgrade arrow, and that's because, of course, every single division that we have in the field has got the older style weapons we've only just started producing these as of well we haven't even started yet because we haven't unpaused the game everybody's going to want this new weapon for that whole duration you're going to see this yellow arrow all 87,759 guns and again as soon as we produce those guns they're going to go out to the front lines and try and upgrade what people have the older weapons will come back and will go into the store cupboard, yeah? The newer weapons do not go into the store cupboard until everybody's upgraded. So that's a, a good thing about this game. Okay, let's hit escape. Let's take a look at research and let's get something else on the go. Uh, support companies, we've got the, en the engineers. Let's go ahead and get the... Let's get the recon companies. We've not yet, although we've researched hospitals, we've not yet made use of them. Uh, another one is signal company. Let's go ahead and go for signal company level two. Okay. Right, unpause. Pick up the pace. And absent of notifications, Queen Maud of Norway has died. A terrible sadness. Pause. Okay, we're 1st of December 1938. Things are really starting to move quite quickly. Now let's have a little look training-wise. Nobody there yet with a silver star. F2. U-boat guy. He's got six submarines there. Nearly ready. Take a look at this. We've got a new destroyer out that's not yet assigned. So let's go ahead and the surface fleet there, this surface fleet. I did say I want four destroyers per capital ship. At some point, our new um, battle cruisers will be ready. They will join into this uh, flotilla that's got the battleships. So the new destroyer there, I'll tell you what, we'll tell them to go here by, again, just modifying the task composition. We'll just up that to, let's go to 12 ships. Okay, so the next few destroyers will automatically hook up with this flotilla. Escape. On pause. Let's come over. Okay, pause anyway. Fuel refining level three. I think that was the one that had that big bonus assigned to it. Yes, indeed it was. So that's that expensive piece of research done. Engineering, this is still a year ahead of time, so that's a no-go. Same with the radar. Aircraft, still a year ahead of time. Navy, still a year. What about artillery? Oh, this is basically just a day or two away. Let's go ahead and unlock this new piece of artillery. Now, you may say, well, why not get the anti-air or the anti-tank done? Because this right here is a piece of equipment that we need to enhance, whereas this over here is more like a a new skill okay so in other words researching this we don't actually build anything new we're still building the same piece of flak just people get better at doing it or better at using it whereas this one here we literally start creating a new piece of artillery so it makes sense to get the new equipment out first and then address the skills second so that we're not producing older uh, equipment for longer than we need to Obviously, the same thing is in reverse down here in 40. We see here this here is a new uh, upgrade, whereas this here is an entirely new piece of equipment from scratch. So, and same there for the uh, anti-tank. So, let's get the artillery researched. Okay, escape and pause. On or around the 20th of December, we will take a look at our air wings. Pause. F3. Let's take a look. Okay, these guys are up to the silver star. Select, select. 
cancel the training. Let's fly him off to the uh, front line somewhere. Tell you what, here is as front as it's going to get. We've got this squadron here. He's full. So we'll get him training. We've got our torpedo bomber. He's not yet quite there, so that's okay. Let's see if we've got a new air wing. Yes, we do. We've got interwar fighters that we can get training. And I'll tell you what, I'll get the second squadron ready as well. Okay. Look carefully where you're deploying. Uh, so let's press escape so that we don't misclick. Let's select there. Look for where it says deploying. This one here and this one here. So shift to select those two. Let's get these guys training on pause. Pause. <laughs> New national focus. Told you Spacebar was going to be your friend. Vienna. Uh, Vienna Ward. Okay. Let's come down here. Fate of Czechoslovakia. Okay, let's go. Back to the uh, F1 view while we wait for all of that sort of stuff. And pause. Okay, January 1939. It's, uh, we're not too long away. So let's go ahead. Free military factories. Let's come over to the logistics. What are we short of? Somewhat short on fighters. Uh, take a look at equipment wise. We've actually got quite a lot of equipment. Again, anti air looks like we're most short there. So let's come over to the free military factory, anti air. Let's put one more factory producing that. There we go. Uh, for the next factories that are going to become available, uh, let's start ramping up the uh, infantry equipment. You know, this MP38. So let's put the next five factories. Oh, not 10, I beg your pardon. Uh, let's drop that down to 20 factories. There we go. Uh, so the next five factories will be uh, working on uh, the infantry equipment so up to the 20th factory, should I say. There we go. Let's hit escape on pause. Pause. We've got three civilian factories. Brilliant. One thing we've not yet done is put any, have, is put any radars down. So let's select our radar station option. And we're going to put some down over the capital. Now, as you can see, we've so far unlocked three tiers of radar technology, which means we can put up to the three levels of radar on any specific state. As we unlock new levels of radar, we'll be able to put up to a level six. And as you can see, the uh, the range of which uh, is progressively higher every time. The easiest way, just shift, left click. That's going to give you the highest level that you've unlocked at this time. Brandenburg. I'm also going to put one radar over onto the western side of Germany. Uh, perhaps this area here, Rhineland, because it's going to help us a little bit with our campaign over here. As well as defensive purposes. So again, shift, left click. That'll do for now. Um, once those things have done, let's carry on with our expansion. So military factories will select somewhere else. Maybe this state here. 10 military factories. How nice. Shift, left click. Boom. There we go. That's that one done. And I'll also queue up one synthetic refinery. You see here there are four out of five on the Sudetenland. Let's put the fifth down as a refinery. And again, that's queued up for the future. Okay, on port, sounds like the wind's picked up a little bit where I live in the time that I've been recording these. Let's roll around to the back end of January, absent of anything major. Pause. Okay, shift. Left click on the unassigned divisions. We've got a shed load of new divisions there ready out of training. Right click onto our training army. Speaking of which, look at all of these divisions that are ready to go. So first off, we've got our two cheapo border guard type divisions. So let's select these guys. And again, we'll hand them over to our Paulus guy, which was the guy holding the area here. So we'll right click. Now, if we select Paulus in totality, you can see now the two new divisions are there. So they're going to make our way over. What we can actually do now is relieve him of these more expensive divisions in terms of manpower and equipment so that they will be better put to use fighting. And again, this is a great reason why to, or, or at least one reason why having more than one type of template, even though they're both infantry, is a good thing. 
So with these guys selected, I'll tell you what, we'll uh, upgrade them straight to the newest type of infantry. I realize we don't quite have enough anti-air available. We're going to go for it anyway, because the factory is producing more anti-air all the time. Okay. And once again, right click onto our training army so that these new divisions uh, go over there while they get their training. Is anybody ready? Well, yes, we've got a motorized division here. Let's give it to the guy that's covering uh, South Germany. So there we go. So he's now uh, got that. Let's come over here. I'll tell you what, we can fulfill our guy on South Germany. See, he's got 19 divisions so far at 24. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. Held shift, obviously. Right click over there. And there we go. He's now got a full going to say pack of cards but uh he's now playing with a full deck let's come over to this guy here we'll replace some of these older divisions that will be a great opportunity so back over to the guy who's training get the motorized division and anyone that's silver as well so we've got these three four five and in my case that's it i'm going to assign those to the general there right click of course, he's got far too many divisions now. 30 out of 24, so I'm going to deselect the six old divisions. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll bring those back to the training officer. We will look at upgrading those once we get a little bit more anti-air. Uh, once we have a few more anti-air guns of ourselves. Okay, let's deselect. Unpause. February rolls around. Was and construction level three research great so everything that's being built under the construction menu is going to do so just that little bit quicker research slots and now that we're well into 39 some of these things are no longer ahead of time excavation level three which is resource efficiency gain plus 10 percent so everything that's getting steel uh, aluminium uh, whether it's that little bit of oil in hanover uh, you name it, all of those resources plus 10%. So that's obviously a good thing. Go. All right. Let's have a little look. How are we doing Navy-wise? Everything's set there. Uh, let's have a look at the last flotilla. Okay, the last flotilla here with our U-boat guy. We hadn't yet set training, even though at least on my game they're now full. As in, we've got all 10 subs, so we're going to start these guys training. Now, one thing that I've slightly neglected, remember when I said I didn't want to waste any fuel? Well, it looks like I may have done a little bit. So let's come over to the trade menu where we had the trade there going with Iran. But we're going to cancel this. So just set this all the way down to zero. OK. And so all of that additional fuel that we were getting from Iran that's filled up our coffers nicely, ready for the outbreak of war. Brilliant. Let's close that, unpause. Pause. Okay, that new artillery piece that we were researching has been researched. And with that, if we take a look, we are producing outdated equipment. In other words, the old piece of artillery. Now, take a look at this. We've actually got 5,000 pieces of artillery spare. So we've actually got loads of artillery uh, in reserve. So... This would be the perfect time to uh, upgrade. And as you can see, it's going to cost in terms of... Well, let's have a look. We're currently producing 15 and a bit every day. Now down to six. So it's less than half again. And again, there's a lot of guns that need upgrading. But otherwise, I'm happy with that. Let's come over to the research. So and again, if you want to find out... What difference does it actually make? Again, just, just, I'm not going to show this anymore, but just this one time. Come over to your research slot. Take a look at the old piece of artillery that's here. Press shift, click the new one, put the newer one on the right. That way you'll never get confused and compare the two stats. Defense 10, the old one, defense 15, the new one, so on and so forth. You can also get a 3D view, should you wish, of the old one and the new one here. Doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it looks actually kind of pathetic, I have to say. I think the scale is somewhat off there, but uh, never mind. We'll give them a pass for that. That may be something. Remember, some of the add-ons give you mod... What were they called? I think they called models. I can't remember what some of the 
Uh, some of the options were on the very first episode that we enabled or disabled, but basically these here are your models there, okay? Don't actually change the way the game's played, just some visual thing. Okay, so let's make use of the new research. Again, we can improve the anti-air or we can improve the anti-tank stuff. Let's go for the anti-air first. Okay, now one thing I want to show... Oh, no, no, no. Forget what I'm saying. Let's carry on, let's carry on. You can see this one here is only a day off. I was actually thinking this is something that needed a DLC. My bad. Let's come over to the Navy. What we got here? We've got a sub. Now, okay, I'm going to just... Rather than create a new flotilla, the way I'm going to deal with this now is as and when new subs come out, I'm actually going to increase the size of my existing flotillas. So let's come to the very first flotilla we ever did that's got 10 subs. I'm just going to up it to 12, okay, and then we'll just do that all the way down. One of the things I wanted to do was try and up the production on my, uh, on my expensive battleships here to try and get these out. Uh, I was hoping to get them out in the early stages of war. I don't think it's going to happen. But what I am going to do in order to get them out more quickly, bearing in mind we've got five pieces of chromium spare, is try and get all available dockyards producing this battleship. As you can see, we've got one dockyard working on it. We've got four that we would like to work on it but are not available. Well, the easiest way to plug that gap I'm going to reduce the number of dockyards working on destroyers by, let's just knock it back by one. And in terms of submarine, let's knock that back one, two, three. And there we go. Suddenly we've got all dockyards working on this battleship. They reckon it's going to be ready January 1940. At which time we would like them to get to work on this new battleship. So let's go ahead and at least have the dockyards there ready for when that happens. Okay, let's hit escape, unpause, improve rubber processing, pause, let's deal with that, uh, get these assigned, everything in 1939 there is now being done, 1941 is just too far ahead at this moment in time, engineering, this one's almost uh, a year ahead of time, so potentially worth getting, aircrafts a year ahead, Ships a year. Okay, this one over here, the anti-tank upgrade. Loads of bonuses across the board. You can pause, read that, or look at it on your own game, but uh, 10, 15, 20% bonuses everywhere. Let's, uh, great, great lot of upgrades to be worth having. Okay. Escape. F3 menu, let's see how the training's doing. Once again, we've got three wings there ready to go. One, two, three. We'll cease these guys training and we will get them to a front line base. There we go. Right click. We've got the Navy bomber, 100 out of 100. So we'll get him training and we'll add any new air wings that are ready. Uh, fighter wings basically ready. So we'll get one new fighter aircraft there as well. Okay. And press escape so we don't accidentally screw anything up this is the new fighter wing i'm just going to make sure i get that one selected and start their training okay escape on pause let's go i'm absolutely determined to live up to my uh promise to get war this time okay pause the fate of czechoslovakia we've got three options here now it may be tempting to say all of czechoslovakia belongs to the right in other words Everything here will belong to us, which is a good thing. The problem is, it's actually quite difficult to keep control of this country. So the other option in the middle there is, okay, well, half-half with Hungary. But an even better option is set up Slovakia as a puppet state. And what will happen here is we will get a little bit of Czechoslovakia, but the rest of it will fall under our control. But they will appear as though they're running themselves. And again, this is known as a puppet, both in this game and in real world. Um, are there puppets in real world? Well, let's just say probably after the whole Iraq-Afghanistan thing, those countries are now probably puppets of the US. In other words, they may have their own leaders in those countries, but I guarantee you, they have a phone line direct to Washington, and what Washington says they do, they do. If not, 
you know, USF also be spreading democracy. 5,000 or 500 pounds at a time, should we say, using laser-guided weapons. In any case, Slovakia, puppet state, yes, okay. So there we see, we gain this bit of uh, Czechoslovakia, and this part here is our puppet. Boom. New national focus, reassert eastern claims, boom. And this is basically us saying to Poland, hey, we want back what uh, was taken off us after World War I. And then they say no, and then we say, that's it. Let's begin. Unpause. There's a news article with regards to this. I'm just going to pause real quick because, again, we've got our free military factories. We've also got another military doctrine. Let's get that one first. And again, we're racing through these now. This one here. Again, read it if you like. We know it's all good. Free military factories. Select. And let's have a quick look on the logistics page. What are we most short of over here? Bearing in mind we've not yet started actually producing anti-tank uh, weapons. We will we will look at doing that soon. Anti-air is okay. Everything there is okay. Trucks are fine. Support equipment, light tanks, trains. Huh? It's all okay. It's all generally there okay. So let's come over to our recruitment menu. We're recruiting these infantry all the time because they're set to infinite. If we kick this lot out early, it will immediately recruit another however many eight divisions there. So let's kick them out now. And the reason I'm doing this is as we have to immediately then hire the rest and equip all of these divisions and we actually have enough for it all. It's going to enable us to see on the logistics page what are we short of or the most short of. Bearing in mind, we've just kicked eight divisions out early and recruited another eight, all of which need equipment. And the answer is, as you see there, anti-air is probably the lowest. So once again, free military factories come over to the anti-air. I'll tell you what, we'll push it up to the all five and then we'll use this button here to tidy it up. When it comes to Panzer Divisions, let's uh, up that to, let's go to 12. And, oh, look at this. We've got loads of rubber spare. Uh, so we'll actually up our fighter production from eight. I'm going to push the boat out and go all the way to 20 factories. That way we're not going to be disturbed for a little while. Let's shift click on unassigned divisions. Once again, these are the guys we just kicked out early. Assign them to our training army. Speaking of which, let's double click on these older infantry divisions. We'll upgrade to the newest infantry template. And as you can see, they're making use of lots of the spare anti-air, of which not that much left, but enough for our purposes. OK. Research slot available. So much stuff happening more quickly. I hope that you're uh, okay with this increased pace we will slow down again once the actual war kicks off so this stuff here still a little bit ahead of time this stuff here no longer ahead of time so let's go ahead and go for the recon company okay unpause wait for that next piece of research pause there it is signal company two Okay, let's go ahead and get the newer MPs researching. Okay, and again, what's the difference between research level 1 and on 2 when it comes to an MP and 3 and 4? They just get better at suppressing the local population. Why? I don't know. Think about it. They come up with some new gizmo to better track down infiltrators. Hidden microphone. I don't know. You name it. You think of the uh, excuse, but there it is. Maybe the uniform looks more menacing. I don't know. Let's face it. They did have a menacing looking uniform. Right. Free civilian factories. We never want to make you or, or make or waste these, should I say. Let's have a look on the infrastructure tab. How are we doing over there? Is there anything supplying us with a lot of materials that we could perhaps make better use of? Ah, uh, Austria maybe a little bit, uh, maybe lower Austria as well, but that's about it. This state here, Holston, look at that. We've got an additional five factories that we could put down onto there. So let's, let's go ahead, get that up to a new level. 
And then once that's done, we'll actually go to Naval Dockyard, this one here. And this is enables us to build new ships. If you come further down, you see, well, hang on, what about Naval Base? What's the difference? Naval Dockyard build ships. Naval Base is like a harbour that lets you put supply and stuff like that through. So those are the two differences. So a factory and a harbour. Think of it like that. So factory here, of course, you can't build a factory or, or, or a naval factory uh, dockyard in central Germany because there's no sea. It's got to be a state and that goes for any country that touches the sea. Um, so I'll tell you what, we'll put two of them down in Hanover. So shift click. There we go. All right, just so that that's done, escape, unpause. Absolute determined to get to it. We're going to do it, guys, even if the episode goes on for 10 hours, which it won't, but uh, we will get there. All right, I'll pause on or around the 10th of April just to quickly see what's going on. Pause. Okay, so we've got some King Zog submits to Italy, so Italy is continuing its... Uh, Rampages through Al the Albanian regions, it would seem. Uh, let's come over to our guy who's training. Several divisions here are ready. So again, just select whoever you've got infantry-wise silver. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to give them all to Bok. And I realize that pushes him over. But what I'm now going to do is deselect or, or, or pull back some divisions from Bok. I don't want Bok to necessarily have 24 divisions. Actually, it wouldn't be a bad thing. So let's actually leave him with 24. So I'm going to pull two divisions off of the older style. So these two infantry divisions here. I'll bring them back to the general that's doing the training. And you know the drill. Select this option here with the division selected to basically modify the template. And again, going for the newest division. Type OK. Escape. And pause. Give it a few more days and we'll see what's happening with the Air Force. That'll do. F3 coming over to Berlin. These guys have trained. Fantastic. Cancel. This is a fighter. We'll put that on Northern Germany. Here we've got Torpedo Bomber. Let's pause there now. Silver. Cancel their training. Northern Germany. Perfect. Because, you know, we need Torpedo Bombers to cover this part of the sea as well. Escape. Let's select Berlin once more. Add a new air wing. Let's see what we got. Fighters. Take a look at this. We've now actually got a couple here from what was Czechoslovakia. So let's go ahead. One, two, two fighter wings. Bearing in mind, this one here with only 11 aircraft is going to cross fill from these two again. Why? Because they are small aircraft. And if you take a look at the symbol here, they have the fighter as well as the interceptor icon. As long as those icons match, they will cross fill regardless. This one here, as you see, is for ships and tanks, so it will not cross fill. Okay, close air support. You see there's a, also one there, and as well as an interwar bomber. Um, tell you what, let's get the close air support as well. That's almost 100 once you add these guys on. Okay. On pause, pause, just to show it can be done this way. Select Brandenburg, all of these aircrafts. Let's go ahead, start the training. On pause, and there you can see almost a full air wing across the board. Pause again. Now we're on 1st of May 39, anti tank upgrade. Actually, going to get this really close to what it was in real life. I thought we were going to be slightly early. Maybe we will buy a one for two, but not too much. Okay, anti air, so several upgrades done there. Let's hit escape. A new notification we've not yet looked at. This one here. We can invite someone to our faction. In this case, Romania. Remember there was that whole thing to do with our shared industrial thing. It was one of the research focus trees. Well, now that we can get Romania on the side, we've just got Hungary to go. So let's select. Come down here to where it says... Uh, where are we... Invite to faction. Okay. They will accept. Thankfully, when you invite any nation to faction, uh, it will basically tell you ahead of time if they're going to accept or not. So you don't really need to embarrass yourself asking somebody that then says no. <laughs> so there we go. As you can see, a small increase in world tension because, of course, they're 
The bad guys are banding together. The bad guys are banding together. So let's get these guys in. Research slot. We've got a couple there to fulfill. So let's over here. Done. Engineering. Okay, computing machines somewhat ahead of time, but, you know, we've been over this. Let's get that going. And aircraft are ahead of time. Ships, artillery, we've caught up there. Tanks, the medium tank. Look at this. No longer ahead of time. So let's start researching this tank. Okay. Boom. Oh, knock yourself out. We're going through all the stats if you wish. But suffice to say, a newer, heavier tank than the older light tank is going to be better. More or less all round. Obviously, it's going to take longer to build, though. And pause. Pause just briefly. Romania has accepted to join us. Brilliant. Hopefully, we'll get a notification soon with respect to Hungary as well. And pause. F1 again. Pause. All right. Reassert Eastern claims. OK, so that's our focus done. Italy pursues closer bonds with Germany. That's, of course, good. Not least because Italy has a massive navy bigger than ours and uh, we need that because to help keep the Royal Navy busy. Our nations share many common interests. Indeed they do. Okay. Italy has requested to join our faction. That's this notification up here. Accept. Again, if you don't see this, just give it a few days. They will. Okay. Italy has joined. Brilliant. Next on the focus tree... We have Danzig or War. Begin. And this is the one that will lead us up to that decision that enables us to attack Poland. And if I right click on Poland, again making sure nothing's selected, you can see here the independence of Poland is guaranteed by the UK. Just like it was in real life. And because the UK is already allied up with France. Duh. So my friend of my friend and my enemy. So if we attack them, that means them and them attack us. And that's, of course, exactly how it was. So looking good. Free civilian factories. Again, never a reason not to make use of these. You're only going to be penalized by not doing so. Don't care what it is, even if it's just expanding an airbase. Obviously, if you've got uh, states like this and you can see that are not blue in other words they're not full always put some it down and if in doubt just build more civilian and more military factories never a bad thing again civilian factories let you build more stuff and or repair more stuff which we're going to need before too long so let's go ahead and fulfill you may say well hang on i'm sure some of these states were blue before why are they now green again because as we've upgraded our um let me just show you which one it was. Research under the industry tab. As we upgrade this one here, so the dispersed industry or indeed this one, the concentrated industry, whichever one you're working down, the further down we get, the more factories we can put into a state by, in this case, 20%. So coming back over here, civilian factories. Uh, let's put... One down in West Halland, that fills that state up. And then we've got this Rhineland here. We'll shift, left click, get that one filled up. And then military factories, we'll shift, left click, Hessen and Mosland just to make use of those. We'll then come over to our synthetic refinery and room for one in Turingen, room for one in Franken. Okay, let's hit escape. Sort it on pause. We're all around to sort of late May. In fact, we're going to have to stop now. The German right uh, claims Memel. Uh, that's this tiny little area here where you can actually see it's currently still in the hands of uh, Lithuania, this yellow state. That's going to become ours. And again, the Germans everywhere must be united. Again, apparently this was part of Germany ways back when uh, and it's now going to be re returned to it. Again, if you if you really look into the World War II uh, thing, it wasn't as cut and dried as oh, some crazy deal guy tried to take over the world. To begin with, he just tried to get back the parts of Germany that were Germany. The problem is when he tried to get Danzig back, Poland said no, and everything <laughs> everything kicks off from there. Was it planned ahead of time or not? I'll let you 
you decide that one. Okay, so Memo, uh, Lithuania Falls, excellent. So let's click and boom, there we go. That's now ours as well. Notice the front line immediately moves forward because, of course, the front line is always at the front. So, before we unpause, let's have a little look on our guy who's doing training. Once again, we've got a couple of these, you know, let's just call them border guard division types ready. Once again, I'm going to uh, send those over to Paulus. You may say, why he's already got enough? He only requires a minimum of three. Okay, but let's get him, you know, let's cover up. Uh, a, a larger area there we go such as that and again he's only going to cover the uh the exact ports so hopefully if the enemy decides to blindside us and of course he could do the same over here as well uh he's actually wanting eight divisions to cover that area effectively okay well you will get eight who else have we got training numerous regular guys um so let's have a look what's this guy need any more well, easy way to find out. Double click all the older divisions, right click them over. He's now four divisions short, so let's select him. And because we're getting very, very close to the outbreak of war now, it's getting to the point where you really need to finalize all the divisions positions and you don't want to change things too much. So let's try do that now before we unpause. So we've got four divisions here that are required to fulfill what that guy needs. Let's left click over here. Any old divisions there, double click. Not that many, actually. Let's right-click over here, just the two. Let's get two of the newer types over there. There we go. What about Bok? Has he got any? He's probably got too many, actually, for us to cover effectively. Okay, one easy way to do it. Let's go over to the training guy. Let's scroll through, and all of those that have got the silver star that are of this newer division type, one, two, three, four. And hopefully you can see now why we're doing this. Those are ready. Let's send those over to Bok. That gives him 28. Let's get rid of this division first because it's old and it's not uh, quite starred. Um, I'm also going to get rid of... I'll tell you, for now, we'll leave the cavalry division. We'll see if it does any good or not. Uh, so we'll just get rid of three more. Bring those over and there we go. He's now fully equipped as well. Brilliant. The guy covering France, he's happy with what he's got. Uh, more green than red, so at least for defensive purposes, he's okay. Uh, the guy up here is happy with what he's got. Again, he's uh, he's just there to hold the line uh, versus Lithuania. Um, they may or may not attack you. I, I found it's not always 100%, but they generally do. So again, to hold the line, okay. If they don't attack you, it's a bonus. You've just got infantry units there ready to go as and when. Brilliant. Training-wise, can we... Again, let's double-click all of these older ones. Let's see what it would cost to swap them all out. We've got plenty of stuff to do it. So let's get it done. No reason not to. Escape. Unpause. Come roll, it's getting close, man. Pause. What do we got here? Unassigned divisions. Shift left click. Right click on there. Okay, escape. Let's have a quick look on the F2 menu for Navy. We've got a few subs here. Okay, come over to our sub guy. This flotilla that's been training, as you can see, mostly silver, apart from the one sub that got damaged. Let's cease their training. And coming over to take a look at all the flotillas here under him. Let's go to the second flotilla. Again, that very first icon selects everybody. So let's just come over to the second flotilla where there are 10 subs. Come to the comp task and we'll just up it to 12. Again, we're making the flotilla stronger by adding additional submarines. Um, so that's the plan of action there. Okay. Escape. F3. Let's have a little look at the air. Okay, these guys are still training. That's okay. On pause. We'll stay on that menu. Absent anything else interfering with us. Pause. All right. So we've just got the notification there to say free dockyards available. So let's scroll down. And we're actually short on chromium because take a look at this. We've got excessive amount of ships trying to work on this battleship down here. So the easiest way to deal with that, let's... Reduce from 5 to 2. There we go. That deals with the shortage. 
and all of these spare dockyards now will just look at producing i tell you what let's look at producing one new ship and we'll come over to our light cruiser section we'll try and get one of these built so let's select one of these we already have some but we may as well get a new one being created so we'll put it to the top of the list again infinite no just the one and all available dockyards in this case for working on this one ship it will be more than useful when it's ready once it is we'll again resume more working on the submarine as well as the regular destroyers something like that okay let's hit escape and pause Just going to pause it one second and mute you one sec. Just hold my uh, better half to come on up. I think she's here now. So let's unpause. Uh, just before I unpause, by the way, should I say, let's look at the aircraft here that are training at Berlin. So you see these here are all ready. So let's cease their training and once again, get them into position. Now, we could put them on this airfield here, but you see the maximum capacity of the airfield is 12. They've currently got 1,100. Can you put more aircraft there than what the airfield is capable of? Yes, you can. What I'll say is <laughs> do so and expect lots of accidents and lots of accidents fast. Uh, so you're best off picking an airfield like this. You can, of course, upgrade the airfields. It's something we've not really looked at yet. Very easy to do. Come over to the construction menu. Come over to your airbase option here and each one of these states that has an airbase you'll see there for example brandenburg six out of ten just left click on whichever airbase let's go for the brandenburg let's just left click once that's going to increase that airbase to a larger one to hold more aircraft that's it it's very quick to upgrade the size of an airbase so it, it won't take long at all so i'm happy uh, to leave that decision there okay let's press escape a uh, quick look at the Navy side of things. These guys are ready to go. These guys are ready to go. New submarines again. Tell you what, let's just for uh, expediency's sake say upgrade these to a 12. Upgrade these to a 12. Uh, upgrade these. Shame it goes off the bottom of the screen to a 12. Hit escape and we'll deal with the rest in a while. keep trying to drink from that empty water bottle <laughs> right first of july 39 let's pause it there we are so close to the outbreak now let's make sure everything we've got ducks in a row so berlin nothing training let's have a look fighter wing there more than enough ready for training and that's going to be it for now to make sure we've got plenty of aircraft spare uh, for you know for once things kick off so let's get those training okay f2 everything there is as trained as it's gonna be so we may as well go ahead and tell our sub guy where to be once things kick off okay because we're days away so i'm gonna select submarine guy i'm gonna right click on this bin to remove any orders that he may have with regards to where he's going to be operating. Excuse me. There we go. So now there are no orders for this guy whatsoever. So we're going to select him. And we're going to right click on the area that we want. East and North Sea. And it does that sound. Okay, we've been over this before. We're then going to go up the Norwegian coastline. We're then going to go over the Norwegian Sea. We're then going to go over the Denmark Strait. We're then going to come down through the North Atlantic Ridge. And we're finally going to end up with the Iberian Coast. You may say, why not go right up to the British coastline? And the answer is, at least initially, because uh, they will sink loads of our ships, both using destroyers and torpedo bombers, that... It's, uh, at least early on, at least I find, is a very expensive way to play. Now, another thing that we may wish to do, let's press escape, come over to your F1 menu, is right-click on Nationalist Spain. And 
There is the option. Well, we've got ask for military access. We perhaps have to wait until the actual war kicks off. But basically, there is an option of what would we be allowed to dock uh, to park our boats up using your dockyards? In other words, can we go there for refueling purposes? And generally speaking, they say yes, uh, because we helped them out right earlier on, which is useful because until we've taken over France, this is a very long way for our U-boats to travel, you know, this part of the Atlantic. Very long. In fact, it might even be too far. We'll, we'll have to see. Once we get France, clearly it's a, it's a, quite, it's a straight shot across the Bay of Biscay and is, is a shorter distance. Okay, Air Force-wise, the training still continues. So let's hit Escape. Let's uh, F1 and unpause. Man, oh man, does this feel like it's dragging on this particular episode? Hits. Excavation 3, Recon Company 2. Okay, okay, so let's get some new research on the boil. Never a reason not to. Infantry equipment. This is less than half a year ahead of time, so let's just get both of these uh, improved infantry equipment done as well as uh, this one here. The MG42 and 8cm Granat and Verfa 34. Knock yourself out with the stats if you wish, but green is good. Okay. Military police is done, so let's pause. Okay, first time we've seen this icon. Low manpower. Now, at what point exactly this appears is dynamic, just depends on how big of an area is under your control. At this moment in time, the warning has come when we're about five, six hundred thousand manpower available. So, the way to deal with this is basically change the laws to allow more people in the population to be recruited. As soon as you change the laws, though, it's not all a win-win, okay? So, if we come over here to our limited conscription, we're currently able to recruit 2.5% of the population. If we go to extensive conscription which is 5% of the population. It's going to cost us 150 political power to make the change. Well, we've got 600 nods, so that's no problem. Take a look, though, at, in this case, training time, plus 10%. Limited conscription, no difference at all. Why would it take 10% longer to recruit? And the answer is because if you're recruiting more people within the population, they're not necessarily all going to be as fit as if you're only recruiting 2.5%. And because of that, it's going to take a little bit longer to do. Things get even worse from here on. And, of course, you start eating into factory production and all the rest of it because you're basically pulling people out of what would be working in a factory and saying, right, you have to go fight by order of. And, of course, that's going to start causing problems at home. Um, you may say, well, don't women replace those jobs? Yes, they do. Well, why wouldn't it then just carry on as though there was no difference whatsoever? I don't know. <laughs> Can't say, can I? So let's leave it there. Uh, let's come over to, let's just say, because they're not used to working in a factory. That's a safe answer, which is, of course, true. Back then, of course, everything's different now. Let's come over to the assigned divisions. Once again, shift, left, click, set all of these over into the training army. And let's look at uh, giving... Ah, it's getting really close to the outbreak of war. I'll tell you what, I want an 8th division with this guy over here. So let's right-click one of these that are ready. Okay. And... What we could also do is... Oh, look at this. We've got some panzer divisions that are ready that are training. Brilliant. So remember this guy here, Heinz Guderian. He's only got two divisions under him. Let's go ahead, get two Panzer Divisions that are ready to go. Right click on Sir Heinz. He's going to be happy once they get there. Rommel's already got four. And so really at some point we'll be looking at creating a new Armoured Division. We'll, we'll wait. Uh, God, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Probably the last division that we're going to create. So the new Panzer Division there. I'm just seeing if there's anything else ready. Not yet. So we'll create a new army over here. Let's get a new commander. It's going to be Manstein himself. And he is going to take this very southern part of Germany here. Okay. 
Now, Slovakia, once things kick off with Poland, will offer to help. I'm just going to say no and hope that Poland doesn't go into Slovakia rather than extend our front line. Okay. Research slot available. Uh, let's just get the field hospital done so it's done. Okay. And unports. And again, if you're not playing on easy, the research takes longer. I know I keep saying this, but it's so true. It means that it won't be as easy to just, oh, we'll click all of these random things ahead of time and it doesn't really matter because it will matter. What order do you do them in? Just look at the order we've done them in this tutorial. Okay, let's unpause. And we're literally days away. Here we go. And that's going to be the end of the episode, the 21st of July, 1939. Poland refuses to cede Danzig, which is this state up here. They know very well what the alternative is. Uh, the UK gained war support. France gains war support. In other words, because we're kicking off, those countries are going to get ready to kick off. Okay, there we go. Poland refuses the German ultimatum. Considering the demands, it seemed inevitable. Da -da 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 -da. Then it is war. Okay, and here we go. The national focus has been completed. Danzig or war. Okay. And now take a look at this. An available war goal. Conquer Poland. And that right there is going to be the end of the episode. I did say we would actually start war. So let's technically get it right. Slow it down to the minimum speed. Available war goal. Let's click it. Let's scroll to the top. We've got declare war. Okay. Are we going to call the allies? Well, usually I would say yes. But for the first one or two countries, let's say no. What are the objectives? Conquer. It's already selected. Let's go. Potential enemies. Nothing potential about it. They're going to hate us straight away. Let's click send. The German Reich has declared war on Poland. Okay. Let's come away from here. Look at the diplomacy. Minus 100. <laughs> I wonder why we're at war. Okay. And with that, we're now at war with Poland. Now in an ideal playthrough... I would have not only have declared war, I would have given these divisions an order ahead of time. But uh, we will actually look at giving these divisions orders in the next episode, which I very much look forward to doing. We've also got the icon up here, air wings with no air missions assigned. That only appears once you're at war, which we now are. Again, we've paused. Hugely important, because as soon as we unpause... All bets are off. Everything's about to change. I hope you've enjoyed the episode and until next time, take care. Bye bye.